let's get physical. It's Jordan here, back again with this week's update. All the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the third week of May, the 16th until the 20th, Monday to Friday. We've got retail, we've got low prints, and we've got imports. And remember, once we get to 100,000 subscribers, we're giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED model to one of you. So uh, subscribe. This week's episode is sponsored by Sakurako and Tokyo Treats. Remember, we showed off Sakurako's March snack box. We showed how refined one can be with yummy traditional local Japanese snacks on a monthly snacky basis. It's May time and it's tea time with matcha and mochi with this month's Sakurako. But we are also asked to show off Tokyo Treats, a slightly different monthly snack box with up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks. Yes, those are banana and caramel Kit Kats. We're going to dive into more detail with these just before the community spotlight, but remember the code SWITCH for 5% off your first order with the links below. Cotton Fantasy is the brand new cotton game in a world where we've had about 6 releases in the past couple of years, which is 100% mental. However, I'm sure a good few of you own this game already since it's been out in Japan with English for a good while already. So uh, yeah, and just like most in-in-games releases, the Western version is worse than the Japanese one. Firstly, there's the censored Pocky and Rocky, and here they just went with a massively boring name. You may remember that in Japan this game is called Cotton Rock and Roll, which is badass. However, in the West this is called Cotton Fantasy. How boring is that? Who makes these decisions at in in games? Like I said a few weeks ago, I think my grandma is the CEO there. Like she thinks like rock and roll is still the devil music. Can't have that on the name. Also remember Strictly Limited have a version of this in Europe and also a collector's edition probably. I don't remember. And our executive producer Instacritic has chosen this as their pick of the week. Maze Mysteries The Secret of Dragonville is releasing in Europe this week. This is a puzzle game adventure thing. I would guess a cheapo version of the Professor Layton games. A lot of variety with the tasks. It was originally a DS game which, you know, of course, why would it not be? Obviously, it's not a big budget release. Don't expect too much out of this one, but it still may fill that Layton hole I think many of us have in our hearts. Level 5 really are being run so poorly these days. How could they abandon Professor Layton? And our executive producer Brent McLean has chosen this as his pick of the week. Also, a quick shout out to Hidden Objects Collection Volume 2, which is releasing in North America this week, I think. Are you ready? It's that time of the week again. It is Code in a Box Bullshit! Ludo Double XL, if you're looking for a lewd game, this is not it! Castaway Paradise, a paradise island probably littered with plastic boxes of these code in a box bullshits. Mickey Storm and the Curse Mask, keep trying you might finally get a mascot. King Leo, a game that makes Panda Hero look like a masterpiece. Jigsaw Fun, the greatest cities. I, I, I kind of want this one. I'm kind of boring, sorry. And that concludes this week's Code in a Box Bullshit. Let's get on with the next bit. Low Prince Warhammer 40k Shooters Blood and Teeth is for pre-order at Strictly Limited Games. Now this is getting a retail release as well, but there is a version up on their website partner store, which is still a thing apparently. They also have a collector's edition there. I guess this is Warhammer trying to get down with the kids, because I mean, whoever came up with that title probably wears a suit to bed. I'm surprised they didn't spell blood B-L-U-D. Now that would have been properly cool. I mean, the game itself looks decent enough, but come on, that name, Teeth, Teeth. Uh, you can pre-order this right now if you want to. And our executive producers V, Viz, Robotech, God of Resin, and Jcross7776, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tassos is Super Rare's latest Switch release, and it looks pretty much exactly like their last one, Archvale and Rogue Heroes. Are they the same game? I don't know. But if you want some Zelda-like gameplay with multiplayer, I've heard this is a really good one. I think I even featured it in a video I made about the best Zelda likes on the system. That was ages ago though, and I don't remember. So yeah, I know some people are going to be pretty happy with this one, and you can pre-order this on Thursday with uh, 4,000 copies available, I think. 
and our executive producer Jennifer M has chosen this as her pick of the week. A Boy and His Blob is limited room games' with the latest release. This is a remake of an NES classic. Well, I like to think of it as a classic, even though most people don't. Mainly because it's just it just looks like it should be a classic. It's so different and ambitious. It's so cute. This is a remake that was made for the Wii. Now it's on the Switch, and I'd be tempted to get this one for sure. Adventure puzzle game as you transform a blob into different tools to help you get by on the levels. Very cute indeed. There is a standard edition and a collector's edition which is frankly taking the piss. $30 more for a poster and a CD. I think I said it last week, maybe last week, that if this was in Japan, those would be free if you just pre-order the game. Like Tasumachi, yeah? Tasumachi, you pre-ordered that, you got a great CD and a fantastic art book to go along with it for free. But in the West, no, they need to charge you $30 for it. And no, that cheap retro sleeve does not count as anything extra. I've done better arts craft than those. Uh, yeah, if you buy this CE, you're definitely being taken for a ride, my friends. And our executive producers, Cartoon Soren and Parsnip Coffee, have chosen this as their pick of the week. Super Sammy Roll is their second release this week. This looks pretty cool, like a 3D platformer, kind of like if Sonic was made by Nintendo on the Nintendo 64. Yeah, it's a bit simple, but it's definitely got some of that feeling. You gotta admit that, right? I quite like the look of this. It even has multiplayer options that looks a bit like Monkey Ball, which is awesome. And you can bundle this with a soundtrack and sticker sheet as well if you want to. And you can pre-order this on Tuesday, I believe. Alright, the imports. Remember guys, if anything takes your fancy and you'd like to import it for yourself, then consider using the links below in the description and the pinned comment. If you use those links, then it also helps support this series ever so much. It would not be where it is without you guys supporting it via our affiliate links. Thank you ever so much. Seriously. And if you click our links, you can also get a very nice 5% off any physical item from Play Asia if you use the coupon code JORDAN. Yes, I don't have any more jokes about my name. That's Jordan for 5% of any physical item from PlayAsia. And remember, it is free shipping for Switch games if you order things over $99.99. So get on that. This week, Star Melody You Made Me Dreamer is probably releasing in Asian regions. I guess the date has changed a lot these past few weeks. But anyways, fingers crossed, this was already released in Japan but doesn't have English. However, this Asian version supposedly does have English. This is a visual novel with added elements of a basic JRPG and rhythm game. I don't know a whole lot about it aside from the aforementioned minigames and the fact that it's about a, a magical schoolgirl, that kind of story. But I'm very much interested in finding out more. I like VNs, I like rhythm, I'll probably get this one eventually. And our executive producer Elisa chose this as her pick of the week. Snow Bros Special is releasing in Japan this week, though Wes will have to wait until June, I think. This is a remake of the classic NES game, and um, this time I do mean a classic because Snow Bros is awesome. Kind of like Bubble Bubble, not as good, but definitely a fine option. Unfortunately, the art style for this remake looks absolutely shite, but I believe you can switch to the retro style, I think. This Japanese version does have English, and there's a collector's edition too. If you want that, it's an early option for you. And our executive producer, Boombox, has chosen this as his pick of the week. And this week, there's also a couple of other games releasing in Japan. One without English, one we already have in the West. Taikon Rishiden 5DX, which frankly is a travesty because I would love that in English, and Zombie Army 4. And also, I'd like to give a quick update on a few things. Firstly, I'd tell you when Witch on the Holy Night was available to pre-order. Well, the answer is now. You can go and get your pre-order in for this one, this very highly anticipated translation of a Type Moon visual novel. I can't imagine this one being easy to get in the future if Melty Blood is anything to go by. And Little Witch Nobita. A newly announced import game. This is a mega cute looking game that's available in the standard and great looking collector's edition. I am super excited for this one. A third person anime witch shooter. That's perfect. Yes, please. Uh, this is coming to the Switch in September and there's been no word of a Western physical as of yet. It may happen. Who knows? It looks cool enough that it may get one. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get your pre-orders in for this Japanese version, which does have English, uh, then you can do so right now. I want to play this game immediately. All right, before we get into the community spotlight, let's jump in to those Sakurako and Tokyo Treat boxes. 
Now let's begin with the Tokyo Treat Box because in this box you get a can of Fizzy Pop or as the rest of the world may call it, soda, but you know, they are wrong. This fizzy goodness is ice cream flavored with melon. I don't really drink soda almost at all because, you know, I'm not 12 years old and I would give it to my daughter, but I am a responsible dad. I only give her Red Bull. So I'm going to take this one for the team. I'm going to see how this tastes. In the club, we'll do it tonight. Yeah. From the back to the left to the right. Yeah. All the guys looking hot, looking tight. Yeah. Come on and move from the wall to the light. That's pretty good, actually. That is really, really nice. I expect I'll be hearing from the Diet Coke people very, very soon. I was sexy. There's a lot more going on with this Tokyo Treat stuff and it is a really fantastic box. I would love to show more but I do have to confess 90% of the taste testing footage that we did was lost. For some reason most of it did not record so I'm really having to ration the footage that I still have over the next few weeks and I do want to state I'm not showing a lot, but I was really impressed with this package. So much variety in it. Now let's head over to the Sakurako, which thankfully everything saved properly. Now as I said last week, a lot of this is tea related. A lot of matcha products this month, but not all, such as this apricot kuzumochi, which is wrapped rather elegantly. My daughter just loves these little jelly things. She can't even wait for me to grab a damn spoon before she sticks her nose in it. Come on, wait, Dad. What flavor is it? It's juice. Juice, Is it orange? Yeah. I mean, it's Another favorite of hers was this Nishio Matcha Pie, which I have to say, when I saw the word pie, my Yorkshire man brain suddenly went to heaven. I love pie. But sadly, it's a little biscuity thing, which is actually rather nice with its little sugar ring around it, a lot of texture going on. According to the handy guide, it's folded into 432 layers. Who's got time for that? I hope they paid them well. I can't fold paper more than like five times, so I don't know how they folded a biscuit 432 times. That is wizardry. And finally, this week, we've got these little twiglet things called Carinto and I have to say these fascinate me because I don't want to I don't want to sound insulting here I don't want to sound insulting stick with me but these if you can just imagine sucking on a raw tea bag but 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 that raw tea bag tastes savory and yummy and moorish and you want more 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 it's kind of I need to eat more of these in my life because they define science. They should not be delicious, but frankly, I just can't get enough of them. Mmm. 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 Raw tea bag. Wash it down with some of this as well. And if you want to try Sakurako or Tokyo Treats or both, click the links below and get 5% off your first order with the code SWITCH. Stay tuned next week for another look at both of them. Alright, on to Eula Ragnarok Day sent in this photo with a double helping of Super Meat Boy, one of which is more palatable than the other. Luckily, I didn't eat before recording. Executive producer Cartoon Soren sent in this double helping of both the Gal Gun series and the recently sent out Magical High School Girl, which is one of Street Limited's games that almost got me to pay up cash for. Executive producer Jennifer M sent in this photo of their cat, plus some delicious imports. I'm currently playing Saga Scarlet Grace for my It's A Bit Late review series, but obviously since I was mega busy last week, I haven't had too much time to play it. 
Theo, thanks for using our links to pick up some of these games. Fascinated to see the LOL game. I think this is literally the first time that's been sent in as a photo. Canal picked up these games, the uncensored version of Pocky and Rocky. Apparently, in in games want to put the blame on the Japanese publisher. It has nothing to do with them, apparently. That's what they messaged to me, anyways. Executive producer Illis has sent in these games. They got in the trifecta of the Natsumi Atari remix of the classic games Wild Guns, Pocky and Rocky, and Ninja Warriors, all supposedly fantastic remakes, well beyond what most companies would do. Very commendable. Executive producer Grant Sir sent in this photo of the recent enough release of Drive, which was available via Limited Run as one of their distribution titles. Really like that simple artwork. Executive producer Issa sent in this massive photo of their super rare games collection. I have uh, one of those. Can you guess which one? Maybe you've seen it. Executive producer God of Resin also got in the last super rare triple pack, but also a triple helping of Crisis. Still a pity Limited Run had to hijack the latter two releases of those. Transient Image, thanks for using our links to purchase a couple of these games. Very happy to see so many of you pick up Chrono Cross. Definitely deserves this second chance of life on the Nintendo Switch, and I hope you all buy it. Executive producer Vey sent in this photo, including the recent release of the Centennial Case, an import exclusive physical. I made a review of this on Friday, and unsurprisingly, it's one of our worst performing videos ever. Literally, like, it was painful how few people watched it. Oh my god. FMVs just aren't that hot. Who'd have thought that? I get it, but I did try to make the video a little humorous as always, so I, I, I do, you know, advise you go watch it, please. Please! Radio Free Camlin sent in this photo. Thanks for using our links to purchase the letter. This is just about in stock. Uh, well, the, the CE is. The standard version is sold out, so yeah, don't miss out on the collector's edition if you're still on the fence. Gaseous Ocelot sent in this photo of the big Ultra Daddy edition of a robot named Fight from Premium Edition Games. That, that is absolutely mint. And definitely the best way to do a strategy guide book kind of thing. What a beast! hardcover and everything. That is above and beyond. Our executive producer Robotech sent in this photo. Thanks for using our links to pick up some of them. Happy to see the double helping of food girls. Both are still in stock if you fancy some simple BN business management. The one picked up this double pack. All copies came in this deluxe edition. There was no standalone release. It's an excuse to put the price a little bit higher. And unfortunately, Makai Kingdom shipped with a big, big problem. You literally can't complete the game since it always crashes at a certain point. Hopefully, a patch is on the way. Grinning Wolf Games sent in their evidence of them destroying the Doom cartridge upon Limited Run's ridiculous request. Is anyone else taking part in this, like, unbelievably stupid Jonestown-esque cartridge replacement scheme? Uh, it's just, it's just, it's hilarious. It is just, I, there are no words. There are no words to describe this. Executive producer Parsip Coffee sent in this photo. They also got in the collector's edition of A Magical High School Girl alongside a couple of horror games, Tormented Souls and the first remothered game. Executive producer Instacritic sent in this photo. They picked up the reprint of the once rare Yamawari collection probably in anticipation of the third game coming along at some point in the future. In the West, at least, it's already out in Japan, but no English. All right, let's have a roundup. Psych Villain. Drew. Black Star. Needless Dragon. Ashura G. Darkour. Ying. Caterpie, Dustin, Hercule, Hudo, Precision Plague, Gage Wagner, No Face, Craig Morgan, Remy X. McLaren. Etienne. 
All right, please send me your pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. And we have an email address, switchwatchspotlight@gmail.com, and our Discord. The server link is below in the description, and you can submit your pictures there in the submissions section once I open it up. Uh, if somebody reminds me to open it up, please just send me one picture per week. If you send me more than that, I will just choose one of them. And I don't care if it's the good one or the bad one. I'll just randomly pick one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Get Physical. A special thanks to our executive producers, Dave Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Hilisa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Fawn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Isa, V, Mental Traveler, Grant Cert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, and our brand new executive Bout 5220. Bout, please get in touch with me on Twitter or in our Discord because I need to have a chat with you and uh, YouTube does not let me have a chat with you. So yeah, we need to have a little chat, a little talk, right? So yeah, please contact me if you can. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. If you watched all the way through, you are a massive legend as well. Uh, if you are, then uh, leave me what kind of emoji? What kind of emoji? Let me think about this. Okay, snow bros. Leave me a snowman emoji. Snowman emoji in the comments, and I'll uh, I'll give you something back maybe. We'll see about it. Please watch my centennial case review. I would like at least at least two thousand people to watch it because I spend a lot of time watching that. I mean, it's good, but it's still a lot of time to make that review. Uh, yeah. So we'll see you guys over there. Have a good one.